Coming up on Mental Health Marty, listen, we are more than just angry black men. I'm so excited to have our guest with us today, Dr. Chris Williams. Please stay tuned. up everybody yes it's me it's your host it's your boy it's your main man martina sellers your mental health hygienist coming to you live and in living color in southern california where the sun is always shining and y'all we are about to go into spring we're in the march madness and what i'm recalling march is march mindfulness because we need to be mindful of our mind and mindful of our mental health so march is all about being mindful why because we need to get better and improve your mental wellness is so important so so glad that you're here listen get people some time we're over on this youtube platform now listen because youtube is the way to go it's our friend we want to make sure that you are uh, up tune on what's going on so if you have not been a part of this family welcome if you found us by accident welcome if you found us by intent we want to welcome you as well invite some people to join us on this youtube channel on this youtube platform we want to welcome those who are part of the black man made well good to see you let us know you're out there and that you're listening we got a great 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 show for you tonight and i'm so excited about it but let me get some introductions out the way what are we and who are we well i'm so glad you asked that question mental health marty is a psychoeducational program and the purpose of this we are not a substitute for you seeing your doctor your therapist your psychologist your psychiatrist your medical doctor your pastor any of those things we are not a sub uh, a, a substitute, but we are a supplement to that. What are you saying, Marty? I'm so glad you keep asking me these great questions. What we mean is this. We are there to be a part of your treatment plan. We are there to be a part of your health and wellness plan. We are part of, of helping you grow mentally, physically, and emotionally stronger so that you can handle the weight that comes your way. We all experience some sort of mental wellness at some point in time. Some days my wellness is better than other days. However, if you're experiencing any type of mental health crisis or falling into the mental illness category, listen, we want you to contact your provider immediately. Go to your nearest urgent care or hospital if you're experiencing any type of psychiatric emergency. Why? Because we care about you and we want to make sure that you are heard. But if not, hey, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. Now, how do you get these notices on a regular basis? Well, we want you to participate. And how do we see your comments? by going to the Mental Health Marty YouTube page. You can put your comments in there. We will see them. We'll try and do our best to make sure we answer any questions, but we wanna make sure that this is a two-way street here. If you have a question, let us know. We will do our best to answer it. If you love something we say, give us a shout out. Say, that's right. Come on, my brother. 
hands up you got five on the comment uh but not on the weed but we want to make sure you do that and then we want to make sure that you are liking and subscribing to our youtube channel but how are you doing yes hello kingdom blessings to you as well we appreciate you thank you for joining in on this tuesday yes jerron what's up my brother you know i got to have you back hope the fam is doing well Yes, 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 and hope that you got the love offering I sent out to you. Hope everyone is doing well out there. As my boy says in church, in video land, we want to make sure you're doing well and that you are living a great life. Today, our topic, our today, our topic, I'm not just an angry black man. Wow. Too often, we as black men are often labeled as being angry as if that is the only emotion that we experience. But I'm here to tell you, black men, we really do smile too. Black men, we really do know how to laugh. We know how to have fun. We even Can I even dare to say this? Some black men, we even know how to manage our emotions. Who'd have thought? But can we do it? Yes, we can. You know, and but however, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes a, a safe space in order to do that. Oftentimes, I'm a big proponent that oftentimes for black men, anger is also associated with some sort of depression, anxiety, because those are part of the symptomology. If you're looking at the symptoms of depression and anxiety, you know, I will also go, what is bothering you? Not judging you, like not what's wrong with you. But, but what's bothering you? What's hurting you? What's causing you to react like this? What's causing you to be out of your normal character? Because we are more than just our anger. Anger has its appropriate place. But if that's the only emotion that we are experiencing, then there is a problem. So I'm so glad to have with us tonight to have this discussion about we are more than just our anger and that black men, we do smile. We have a great time. In fact, we love life. And I want to help change the trajectory of the life expectancy of black men. We are part of the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to longevity in life. Why? Because we have some of the highest blood pressure, high blood pressure rates. Why? Because we have some of the highest stroke rates. Why? Because we have some of the most unhealthy uh, 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 registers, if you will, if I can do that. And we have to learn how to pay attention to our bodies when the signals are going off. It's more than just lifting weights. It's more than just getting in the gym and looking temporarily fit. And that's just really a small portion of us. But what about the average everyday man? How does he deal with pressure? How does he deal with stress? How does he deal with his blood pressure? How does he deal with anxiety? How does he deal with life? I'm so glad you asked. And we have an amazing person on here that's coming. This is his first time on the Mental Health Matter, Mental Health Marty show. But let me tell you this, this is definitely not going to be his last. He stayed up with us to be with us tonight, y'all, all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. I want to welcome none other than Dr. Chris Williams. Doc, how you feeling, my brother? I'm great. I'm great, man. I'm glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. So uh, I was super excited. Me and you when both, you man. Out. Yes, <laughs> yes. Doc, yeah. share with us um, who you are, what you do, your specialty, and why this passion for Black men and their health. So I am a, my name is Dr. I mean, my name is Dr. Christopher Williams. Everybody yes. calls me Chris. Only my, only when I, I only get called Christopher when I'm in trouble or something like that. So, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a physical therapist by training yeah. and I'm okay. a certified uh, health coach and I specialize in dealing with how to manage your emotions and Love uh, particularly with people who have difficulty controlling their anger or even working yes. with people who are in a relationship with somebody who has anger issues because that is also needed. And, you know, I came by that really just from my own struggles 
personal experience mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where the passion comes from. You know, I think it's funny, like it was something that you kind of suffer in silence about. And yes. then when you get along this path of enlightenment, you realize yes. like you're not the only one who deals with this. Exactly. And I'm too tired of it. I feel like we need to go ahead and start talking about this. This mm-hmm. is what was beneficial and helpful for me. And so I want to go out there and really help as many people as I can, because I, I know I love that. people, this is that thing like we all talk about, but nobody yeah. does anything Talks about, about. It, And I'm tired. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm with you, Dr. Chris. I am. I am. We talk about it, but, but we, we just talk about it on surface levels. And, and, right. and one of the things we talked about when, when we were doing uh, the early part of last month, the Black Man mm-hmm. Made Well conference, we were talking about creating safe spaces for Black men to be able to be vulnerable. I know we don't like that word. It's almost as we bad don't. as the L word, love. Uh, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, but Dr. Chris, why is it so important that Black men have these um, barbershop talks, these safe spaces where we can, we can, where bros can be bros, where we can do that and, and, and really share our experiences without fear of judgment. Why is that so important? I, I think it's important. It's, I like how you use the barbershop reference because you stole my mm-hmm. stuff. I was getting ready to go that as well <laughs> because that, that's where we go. You know, I had a coworker who said, you know, I'm yeah. going to go to the, the place where men go in and gossip. And he was like, I'm going to the barbershop. And especially mm-hmm. like with COVID first popped off yeah. and it and people weren't going to the barbershop and people stopped right. going to do those things. Like you need yeah. those safe spaces. And I'm so That's thankful good. for my friends, my bros, like um, doing guys trips, having those safe yeah. spaces where you talk about stuff. And it's funny, mm-hmm. my wife was like, go over there and y'all talk about your wives and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, I mean, we do, but we, it's, we talk about a whole bunch of other stuff, a right. whole bunch of other stuff. And it's so important because for me, you realize like, you're not the only one that's struggling with this and that you're part. around some people that you love and that you respect. And then mm-hmm. they're going through it too, or they may have already done, gone yes. through that and they have some words that they can speak on it or they can help yes. shine that light on you. And too often, I think we are just, so prone to just not say anything and just suffer in mm-hmm. silence. And that's, yeah, that's play. Um, so Dr. Chris, you're taking you my, my saying, safe places. Yeah. I, but I say, you know, too often I say we secretly suffer in the shadow of shame. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. in, in that regard, that. because we're shamed that, that well thinking, because when we're isolated in those things, we, we, we can never see that anyone else has gone through the same thing. Cause I'm like, well, you know, uh, uh my pastor always says it this way. We, we kind of have this, uh, woe is me. You know, nobody does it, but me, uh, nobody going through it, but me and like, bro. Yeah. We, we all going through it. Uh, because we, especially as men, we, we, first and foremost, we're not taught how to communicate, you know, uh, my, my six year old don't, don't, please don't judge me. I have a six year old. All this gray. I'm not, supposed I, to say, I, I, I do got, too. I, I look, <laughs> okay. Okay. I got a okay. six year old little see, girl. I, uh, so. I, I, I got a 31 year old, a soon to be 24 and a six. That's too far Ooh. in between. I, I know. I, <laughs> you weren't done. You weren't done. <laughs> <laughs> she has a whole conversation by herself. Uh, I put her in the bathtub one day and she and her doll, she had about five dolls in there and she was just having this whole conversation. I thought there were 10 other people in there. Just, uh, she was fussing and da, 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 da. I'm like, who are you fussing at? You put uh, a, a boy in there. He's going to make noise. He's there. Right. And, and so when you get that differences of, of that, you know, we they start off young and teaching men and young uh, boys at an early age. What's wrong? What's bothering you? Please share. Use your words. Let's talk this out. You know, too often we like, oh, shut up, suck it up. But, 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 and then we wonder yeah. why when we get to adults, we struggle with expressing ourselves because we weren't allowed early. So you got 15, 20 years of you being told to shut up, you know, uh, man up all these other things. And now you're like, I'm in a relationship. I'm supposed to be uh, talkative and share my emotions. 
Uh, I don't yeah. know about you. You see that same challenge on, uh, uh, on the East Coast and in the South, bro. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's um, you have to talk like I will say, yes. you know, I love both my parents. I'm definitely a, a mama's boy and okay. my mother and I are very close and both of my parents provide. They're both social workers. So I grew up in this environment oh, okay. where we talk about a lot of things. And but mom always had a way of just kind of knowing what was wrong. And that was good in the beginning, but then it also later on developed to something's wrong. I'm not feeling right. I mm -hmm. need to talk about it. They call mom. Mm -hmm. And what you have to learn is that you can't expect the other person just to read your mind. I love I, I love yes. scrolling through on the gram and people are like, oh, right, he right, should right. just know what I want. And I'm like, no, how, uh -huh, how, uh -huh. you need to trust me, dudes, women, everybody we are all going through it we have a lot of stuff on our plate right if you want something specific a closed mouth don't get fed like you need to That's open right. up and express that and we too often we don't do that especially as men i think right. we're so worried about how we're gonna come off and look and appear and appear mm -hmm. somehow somehow mm -hmm. talking about your feelings seems mm -hmm. less manly and i don't know Ooh, that's good I'm, that's good I mean, that's 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 been my experience. And then mm -hmm. you go through like at this point, I'm so blessed to like discover Bruce Lee, uh, discover mm. even some of the stuff that Mike Tyson's talking about. And you're talking about people you, you nobody yeah. questioned their manliness. Yeah. But these right. guys you know, now Bruce Lee was a very deep, deep dude, very in tune yeah. with his feeling. Yeah. Martial arts was yeah. an expression of his philosophy. He was a philosophy major. And um, wow. so I'm like, wow, like, that's who I want to be. I want to be like Bruce. Like, I want to be like that. Could you say something real I interesting, Dr. The, Chris? Yeah, no, go ahead. You want that to be kind of the... I want that to be the new cool. I want that to be the yeah, new cool. Yeah, I love the it. So, you know, cowboy, Marlboro man, you know, <laughs> no. No. Yeah, yeah. But you say something, Andrew, when you're talking about Bruce Lee and, and, and even to a certain extent, Mike Tyson, because these were athletes and, and, and no one ever puts martial arts in this athletic uh, category. However, it requires a lot of discipline. Yes. And, and, and when you're dealing with that, you have time to process. Now, uh, Dr. Danielle here. What's up, Danielle? We're talking about I'm not an angry black man. I get it. Well, listen, I'm glad you're not. But some of us uh, have some challenges with being labeled. as, And even if we're not an angry black man, we're often perceived and labeled as that, especially yes. because if we, we raise our voice, whether it's out of excitement or not, we're often quickly labeled, and then therefore we're responded to by society, or, or society responds to us from that label. But I love what you're saying, Bruce Lee. Uh, what is it that about, about practicing? I don't want to necessarily say, say discipline, but practicing grounding for men that is so important, so that we can manage our emotions. Because you talk about how to uh, uh, use. I'm, I'm using your words. You says brothers we do have brothers who know how to manage their emotions and a real brother knows how to manage his emotions. Talk to me about that saying about managing our emotions, especially when we're expected not to manage them. You, you know, too often, I think people think of, in my experience, people talk about anger, especially anger. Mm -hmm. Nobody feels like they need help managing joy. Uh, you right. Know, uh, oh, that's good. And uh, even though anything, I, I just kind of believe in this whole theory of just things have ba have a balance to them and mm -hmm. too much of anything or not enough of something is going to be bad. And mm -hmm. just having discipline to do that, mm -hmm. the discipline, the tools, it's the routine, right. you know, and I think right. we, it turns around. I love analogies and I love mm -hmm taking things that seem unrelated and kind of putting them together. And it's mm -hmm. like the athletes, Mike Tyson, mm -hmm. yes. Kobe, you know, things yeah. like that. They get that great because it's the routine and you mm -hmm. could be that great too. 
if you started right. on your routine. Like, and so mm-hmm. you, it, you have to one acknowledge that you this is an issue. This is a part of your game, so to speak, mm-hmm. that you want mm-hmm. to improve. And then it's mm-hmm. like, okay, let's go and find the tools that I need to go ahead and do that. So, I think too often we're just not. That's good. We don't have a routine. We don't want to admit that there that we have a problem because mm-hmm. we're afraid that that makes us look crazy or mm-hmm. something like that. And I'm not crazy. And I think most of the, you know, I don't like that word. I don't really like a lot of right. labels to begin with anyway. Right. So I, right. I'm really more interested in the person and their journey and then That's how it. the That's pieces it. of the That's puzzles it. come and fit together. And I'm like, I'm of course, together. this is yeah. how you got here. So, yes. um, so yeah, I think all of that, managing your emotions, I'm not an angry, I'm not just an angry black man. I'm a happy black man. Mm-hmm. I'm a healthy black yes. man. I'm a loving yes. black man. I'm all of that. You know, do I get angry sometimes? Yeah. But the goal of is like, you need to learn how to appropriately express that anger. Anger is not yes. a bad thing. It's like, I, right. often, I jokingly say, it's like, anger is a lot like tequila. Like, it's not innately <laughs> bad, but it's what you do under its With influence. <laughs> mm-hmm. is what's going to mm-hmm. yield you your good or bad results. So, um, right. you have to, right. and we didn't get that. And I, I, I personally think, you know, coming from slavery, this is a conversation yes. my mom and I talked about. Like, we, we have a generation now where people have an opportunity to do what they like and be successful and make a living and feel good about it. You go mm-hmm. back, we're not that far removed from slavery. Like, you know, right. they, they didn't have that luxury. The context was mm-hmm. different for them. It was really exactly. more about surviving. And you find your happiness where you can. And we survived. Mm. And now the kids can go to school. Now they can go to college. Mm-hmm. Now they can do these things. And so, and I think that's mm-hmm. how I see how we got here. But then mm-hmm. how can I expect, how can a lot of black men expect to know how to express themselves when their daddies didn't know how to do it. Their granddaddies Ooh, didn't good. know how to do it. That's uh, good. They can't that's give good. you something that they never had. And so uh, right. we have an opportunity to set a new trend. And to me, I feel like that's that's the ultimate success, to be able to do mm-hmm. what you want to do, what makes you feel good, help people, mm-hmm. make a living. And to me, that's what mm-hmm. makes the ancestor who went through all the trials smile and say it was worth it. Yeah. So, uh, I love that. That that's so good because I agree. We we often um I I think a lot of our emotions because I do believe in this whole generational we can teach our children anxiety. We can teach yeah. our children depression. By the same token, we can teach them, like you said, we can teach them joy. We can teach them happiness. We can teach them how to live fulfilled lives and not be so not uh, hanging on to the past so much. And and yeah. and I'm, I, I, I told you, man, I've been following you. You talked about we have to stop being a victim. Come on, I'm using you. You you. Oh yes. <laughs> You called it the the angle a, a anger management. What did you call that? Uh, uh, I can't read my own writing. Um, but anyway, you talked about uh, the anger anger management uh, tip that you wanted to give that day, and you said stop being yeah. the victim. Talk to yeah. this black man. How do black men stop being? Because it's you know we are the victims of so many things, but how do we stop being the victim of perpetuating anger? I think with the whole pro tip about stop being a victim, it's, I got it from, I read somewhere, it's like, be the hero of your own story. And that just kind of made me sit and think for a second. And uh, I think it was the connecting, like it was a Will Smith movie. I think it was Focus. I never watched it, but in the preview, Mm -hmm. he said Mm -hmm. you can either be the hammer or you can be the nail. And right. to me, it's like, well, which one do you want to be? Well, when you say it like mm-hmm. that, I want to be the hammer. Well, hammer. Guess what? Uh-huh. victims, victims, when we sit here, I think sometimes, even though it's not where we want to be, it's comfortable yeah. to us. Yeah. We, I have this going on for me. I have that going on for me. And don't get me wrong. Like, life is sucks. And life is shitted on all of us. <laughs> and, exactly. Exactly. But you know what? That's life. That's 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 a side yeah. effect of life. You know, that's the cost yeah. of it. But what do you yes. have to do about it? And yes. um, 
in sports, a lot of times, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. And what are you going to do? And sit there and pout about it? No, you got to keep. There's still there's still time left on the clock. Like you got to keep going. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to mm-hmm. do? What am I going to do about it now? And I love. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of not trying to be a victim, and as well as taking responsibility because yes. being a victim, being a victim gives your power away. And you don't mm-hmm. realize it. You hear responsibility and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, here we go. Here's this lecture. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, no. Yes, exactly. Taking responsibility is taking your power back. I mm-hmm. This happened. I responded oh. this way and I didn't like it. So guess what? I have to own that. But guess what? I also have the tools and the power to fix it. So next time yes. I'm in that situation, I can choose to do differently. But when you want to sit here and make excuses and point fingers and all of that, you never get to learn the lesson. And then you yes. repeat it. So history is, you know, those who don't learn their history are doomed to repeat it. So that's okay. I don't I want I don't want to skate past what you said. You said accepting responsibility is taking your power back. Come on, you yes. better drop some nuggets on us, brother. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. But 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 in that, uh, we we get so if I'm a victim, or and I feel like the victim, I, and we don't necessarily have to be the victim because some of that is 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 self proclaimed and self um, uh, actual actualization of being the victim. But if now if I accept the response my responsibility, I'm therefore taking the power back. For me to be in control, but 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 I'm gonna say it like you said. I'm taking the power back of managing my own emotions and therefore living my best life. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And, and 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 it's work because if all I've known of being a victim is not accepting responsibility, th- there's a learning curve that we have to Absolutely. go through. Absolutely. And, and and relapse is possible, but but we don't have to stay in relapse. We can heal and recover a lot quicker. That's a part of accepting responsibility. As a part, of, then I'm going to take action. I'm going to get into my plan, uh, uh, in in those type of things as well. Man, you you you're working me. I love it. I love. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, a- so absolutely. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, I got another one that you said. Uh, uh, you said this thing about how uh, we have this misconception that practice makes perfect, but you Ooh. said practice <laughs> makes permanent. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Talk to me about that. Talk to us about practice makes permanent. That's good. Though. So, what I, this came from my experience as a physical therapist. And I used to tell, I used to say this to my patients. And usually if you got the speech, it's because you hadn't been doing, (laughs) you hadn't been doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And, and, um, but the thing is, I think we, we all, whether or not you know it or not, you're practicing Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think you just need to slow down and just acknowledge that. Like, what am I practicing? If you're practicing if you're sitting on the couch eating y'all don't have bojangles out there do y'all uh no we don't have yeah. bojangles we don't, we, <laughs> if you have if you're eating you know junk food and all this other kind of stuff right 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 we got jack TV, in the box jack jack in the box uh jack in the crack is what we used to call it uh. jack in the crack. Listen, that was that two three a.m run where you come from, from having too much tequila <laughs> To soak up all that tequila, brother. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yes. Oh, you so you you you're familiar. Um uh-huh. but it, that's what you're practicing. If you're practicing sitting on the couch watching TV, not doing anything, well right. that, guess what? That's right. what you're becoming that's what you're getting good at. Yes. And that's what's gonna yes. become permanent. And it would frustrate me so much because you see people who have this potential and I'm like, you still have an opportunity to turn around and yes. they don't they don't believe that or they don't want to do it or there's a you know a variety of reasons but i'll just say they mm-hmm. just they don't believe it to a, on a mm-hmm. fundamental level where they feel mm-hmm. compelled to start tapping mm-hmm. into it because you're right it's work it's work like it we're is. designed to seek pleasure avoid pain and use the least amount of energy while doing it and so sometimes even if something's dysfunctional and it ain't working for us, but it's my right. go-to move. 
I have to learn a new yeah. move. You mean to tell me I got to work on my game? I got to add a, a baby hook. I got to be able to go to the yeah, level yeah, and, yeah. and all this other kind of stuff. Man, that's work, coach. I ain't trying to do that. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pam, so, Pam, where you been at, baby? I've been missing you. Yes. How are you? Hope you are doing well. Not trying to be the victim. Pam, I hear don't you do it. loud and clear. <laughs> yes, yes. And and Pam has been a faithful follower of mine for about seven years, man. She's been on here awesome. uh, showing much love. Yes, yes. She's been out there. Give my love to the fam, uh, Pam. But, but I love it. Not trying to be the victim. You know, why is it as we as men? Because a lot of times when I get new clients, especially when I'm talking about black male clients, I'll ask them, have you done this thing called therapy before? And they're like, you know, I was thought, you know, therapy was for the weak and I never. So I said, well, so since you don't like that term, you know, it, it's, it's all psychological. I said, well, how about if I just become, and you know, you can usually tell if we're talking about just a mental health, mental wellness versus severe mental illness. You know, that bipolar, right. uh, Got to get with the, the YouTube. Yes, Pam, get with the YouTube, baby. We over there here now. So make sure you subscribe, and then you'll get uh, uh, the, the message every time. And so I said, how about if I just become your life coach? And yeah. then all of a sudden, their whole demeanor changes. Yeah. I said, well, tell yeah. me what a coach can do. Uh, I said, because coaches actually do more things that maybe me, I, I as a therapist wouldn't do because a coach, you said a coach can yell at you. Now, I'm not going to just yell at you, call you stupid or anything like that, but I will challenge your uh, behavior patterns because if you're doing a pattern a certain way in sports, but if you're not getting the results, my job as a coach is say, dog, pull that arm in, you know, keep that head low, you know, when you're running. So, so because I want my job is to get the maximum out of you uh, so that yes. you are realizing your full potential. And, and, and Dr. Chris, you'd be surprised as soon as I say that the light bulb goes right on and they get comfortable uh, with right. that. But yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so when you're talking about changing, not becoming the victim, but changing our behaviors, changing the way we think, changing, I say it this way, Dr. Chris, changing our stinking thinking in yes. a different way so that now we can recognize those triggers uh, and everything. Yes. Pam says, about to set up. A, <laughs> thank you. The men need to hear this discussion. Pam, <laughs> I love it. You got all I those men it. in your house. That's right. That's right. Um, yes. Why is it so that we can do the sports analogy, but we struggle with mental, and I'm going to go here because as a physical, um, a, a, I love this, a doctor, you do physical therapy, you're a functional movement specialist. Is, am I right? Yeah. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> right, that's right. correct. Why is it that we, we struggle with our mental and medical wellness, but if we're talking about doing sports, or, or chasing some skirts or doing some other is a whole different platform. Why do you think we have struggles as black men dealing with some of those um, analogies and basics? I, I, I think we struggle with that because, well, let me answer it this way. Like, I think we struggle, okay. it's, we all, we all want to be Kobe, Kobe? Emmett Smith, you know, <laughs> yeah. or whatever, uh, you know, these, that, that that's that's somehow manly that's yes. you know, that's desirable and those are the things that we want to do but what you don't know the irony <laughs> the irony <laughs> is that kobe meditates <laughs> you know kobe yes. does these things you know all these things like you ought to want to do therapy well you know what you right. call it whatever you want to call it like uh i'm teaching you a new skill Obviously, you're here because you're not performing the way that you want to perform. And mm -hmm. um, we need to, kind of like in sports, we need to go back and look at film and That's say, good. okay, let, what, what happened here? Why did you do this? What was going on in your head? These are all the things, and it becomes more easily yeah. digestible that way. Okay, if you, you now you feel like you're like Cam Newton or somebody. You were like, oh, well, yeah. coach, yeah. I, thought, I thought the defense was going to do this, and so, and that's why mm -hmm. I, I re responded that way. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, okay, well, what would you do differently? You know, what do you think mm -hmm. you need to do, you know, depending on the outcome? And that's Talk really... 
that's really what it's about. It's almost like, uh, yeah. you know, my mama, she would hate this, but she like, sometimes you got to put some sugar with your shit. And uh, yeah. if that's, yeah. what, you know, that's what it's going to take for right. you to get the message, for you to get well, because I see yes. the potential in you. And yeah. you're just caught on, you're, you're hung up on the wording about it. And mm -hmm. we can work about that mm -hmm. later. What I know what? is that when just you magic, make that really? shift, Yes, you're going to feel so much better and you're going to feel like this. Like I've been looking at this all I've all been looking wrong. at this in a way that doesn't serve me. And now yeah, that's, that's, I see yes. kind of unlimited potential here. And so mm -hmm. um, I, it's just, you know, it's like what I don't know if it was those MasterCard commercials where it's like the cost of doing this to wealth ninety nine, mm -hmm. the cost of doing that three ninety nine, being able to feel like you reclaimed oh, your good. power and have unlimited potential man that's priceless yeah. and so to be it really a part of a team that gives that to people especially our men because you're right we're at the low end of the totem pole when it comes to mm -hmm. our health when it comes to life expectancy when it comes to a whole host of things and but yet we've been through so much and yet in a way, I mean this in a good way, it's like we're like roaches. Like, you can't get rid of mm -hmm. us. You could blow the world up with nuclear bombs, and guess what? We still find a way to survive. When other species are annihilated, we just, okay, it's just another Tuesday. And so mm -hmm. how can we take mm -hmm. that resiliency and that black magic in a good way, not black yes. dark magic, but that, you know, they right, talk about right, black girl right. magic, but that black man magic, uh, black, all of black, that, black, and yeah, use it yeah. to our advantage. Um, and that whole, and that's an old stigma that was, that came from, that came from somebody else. You learned that from your mom yes. or dad who learned that from your yes. grandparents who learned that from, and you yes. gotta look at the context in which they learned mm -hmm. that in. I bet you now, mm -hmm. if your grandma, great grandma, great, great grandpa were alive and they understood, they say, you know what? You might need to go talk to that man. Cause uh, yeah. if they're gonna help make you better, then yeah, that's all you gotta then say. Want to like, help make you better, yeah. Yes, yes. So. And I think that's right, you know, and, and, and that's what I was saying. You know, like I, I had a uh, sharing with you earlier in the in the pre show about this black man who had come in and, and how he had, had a stroke and how his blood pressure was just crazy. I was sharing what one ninety three over one forty. I'm like, dog, you you're a dead man walking. And yeah. his anxiety when I did the um GAD seven with him, anxiety uh, through the roof it, it was high i was like mm. then i did the 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 uh right he he had a perfect score on anxiety that's not good yeah <laughs> i nailed it no you didn't <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> like, uh, yeah yeah we were nailing uh uh nailing your coffin if we don't change this around and then his right. his um depression scale was almost equally as high i'm like your, your 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 measurements, your mental health tools, your are through the roof. Your physical health tools are through the roof. And we had talked about earlier in the pre-show about the lights in our body engine going off, but yet we're still ignoring the signs. Why do we care more about our raggedy car than we do our beautiful bodies uh, when we keep ignoring the signs? I think the cars are, somebody said this, they, they say men kind of define themselves by what mm -hmm. they do. And by an extension, your car, I always, another analogy, like in the wild, uh -huh. wild west, your car is like your horse. You know, it's an right. extension, it's right. a representation of you. I know Tony's here because I see, you know, I see his car, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. thing. And so we'll care more about that because you can get props for that. It might be yeah. attractive to the ladies, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, people don't think it's, you know, I, I journaled for, I journaled for a whole half hour, uh, three times this way, this week, you go spit right. the line to a lady and guys don't think that that's going <laughs> to be, that, 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 that's just not going to play there. They'd rather say right. I drive a BMW. Like, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, but what you don't you're know about to is blow that, a Right, you don't know that, and but it's clean though. <laughs> what is like on Friday? Right, like, right, right. Look I good. keep them clean though. <laughs> like uh, yes, and yes. so it's one of those like you rather look good than actually 
be good. Be good. Once again, I would yeah. say in that it's 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 less threatening. You know, going mm-hmm. my whole thing with when I work with people, I say I'm a big proponent of like the beliefs that you have Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you're you inherit uh, most of these beliefs you have you inherited those from other people and until you are you don't think about it because well i where until you're faced with a situation and then you're like where did i get that from oh man i got Mm -hmm. that from my mama if you talk to mama Mm -hmm. your mom probably got that from somebody else and then you're like okay well i need to switch that that's not working for me Mm -hmm. anymore Okay. Mm-hmm. But I think somehow we feel like it's some kind of we throw all this other stuff. I'm betraying my family and all this other yes. kind of stuff. So and so it's just easier just to set this over here and just not deal mm-hmm. with it. And yet you're mm-hmm. still you're still suffering. You know, you're having mm-hmm. you're talking about your your patient. You you're having a stroke. You're, yes. you're having pain. Like these are yes. all signals. These are all signs that something is wrong. And yet, what do we do? I mean, part of this is kind of a cultural thing because we we tend to think mm-hmm. like pain is for the weak. Only weak people feel pain. Mm-hmm. And don't mm-hmm. really, even the the commercials for like Bayer and ibuprofen like don't let pain stop you. No, pain is trying to tell you something ain't right. Something mm, something yes. ain't right up in here. Like, and you might need to yeah. take a exactly. second, breathe, and address this. What's going on? And then if I don't have an answer. Well, then who do I need to go to? Go to the right person. Don't go to, don't talk to your butcher about your, yeah, <laughs> about your cholesterol, yeah. maybe not about your, you know, about your <laughs> knee pain. You know, exactly. go talk to a physical therapist, go talk to an orthopedic, you know, go talk to somebody who deals in that, who that's their wheelhouse. That's in their wheelhouse, I should say. Totally agree. Totally agree. Curly Palmer. Hey, Curly, good to see you. Thank you for always supporting on the Black Man Made Well channel. Appreciate you. You. And then Dr. Hill, we see you on the Black Man Made Well channel as well. But you're, you're absolutely right uh, when we're doing these, how to pay attention to our bodies uh, and, and, and looking at and the lights going off. Because too many of us have the check engine light going off, the, the tires, we need air in the tires, uh, uh, we, we're about to run out of gas. Um, and I was sharing it in my, in my car. It says, you are uh, 1,200 miles past your next service. Do you want to call now, call later, or just delete? I keep hitting call later, call later, right. call later. <laughs> but how many of us keep doing that, especially as black men, ignoring that all the lights are on, and you say, you can hit call later all you want to, but sooner or later, you're about to be on flats for real. I'm not going to yeah. move. We're going to break down, and it's going to happen at the most critical time in your yes. life. Yes. And and, yeah. and then, then we do become angry. We're right. angry at the situation. We're angry at ourselves. We're angry. And, and then, like you said earlier, it's going to cost us way more in the maintenance than it did if we had done the preventative, uh, preventative measures to keep it, uh, make sure we're healthy and strong. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's... Like listening to you, I was thinking, uh, I saw this and it was a good explanation about like why we get angry. And it's almost Mm -hmm. like you have, you know, you're, you are like this well and Uh you can only hold so much. And I can see how we're in this predicament. What happens is that stuff happens and it gets a little higher and it gets a little Mm -hmm. higher. And if Mm -hmm. you don't express it, if you don't address it, if you don't talk about it, it just gets a little higher, gets a lot. So when it Mm -hmm. overflows and fills out, we can't control anymore. Ah, Yeah. The Tasmanian devil. And we act like (laughs) this happened all of a sudden. No, this had been happening this whole time. It happened when you didn't talk about the trauma that you dealt with, you know, growing up. It happened in your would it say when you when you are silent when you when you keep the peace like you start the war within and we are so come on we are so good at that you know i don't want to say anything Mm -hmm. because it's going to be an issue you know what Mm -hmm. freedom lies on the other side of the difficult conversation and it's awkward um 
<laughs> wait, wait, that's a mic drop. That's a mic drop. That's a mic drop. We don't want to miss that. Freedom lies on the other side of the difficult conversation. Woo! Come on. Come on. Listen, so Reese, I had to let folks know with changes I'm going through, my broke down car is the least, of, come on, of my worries. Matters of right. my mental health have to come for Pamela, I could not have said it better yeah. right there. That's right. Yep. Uh, freedom yep. lies on the other side of the difficulties and controversy. Man, 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 that, 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 if, if, Listen, that's a mic drop. That's a mic drop right there. But 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 we as men, we have the fight, flight, freeze, or fawn type of attitude with that. And 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 too often we'll we'll get in that and never deal with the heart or the elephant in the room because of maybe childhood traumas or or this is the way my father always did it and this is the way his father and I saw my uncle do that. And in fact they told me to shut up and not deal with just just and so all of this I always say it this way, I just happen to have a Coke can here. Don't judge me. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. you, know, <laughs> you know, we we have this shaking coke syndrome. You know, shut up, don't say anything. We don't say anything, we get skip, and then all of a sudden, ksh, the slightest, yep. And I would say this way too, Dr. Chris, we're imploding first internally before we explode second externally. Because mm. the, the, the bubbles are, are, are already uh, on the inside because with each shake, it gets stronger and the pressure gets stronger. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so then, and so we're doing damage to not just ourselves, but everyone around us as well. Yeah. And I think that's why it's so devastating or it's so difficult, especially when it comes to anger, because yes, after you have that explosion, that mm -hmm. tantrum, the, that's yeah. what I call these adult tantrums or these outbursts. And then you're like, man, I acted a damn fool. And it's right. like, I knew, I knew it wasn't even about, it wasn't even about what that's this the part. Was, what, what it would happen. And it's like, man, I showed my ass and now I'm feeling yep. all kinds of shame. And I hope, you know, I hope they don't call me out on it because that's mm -hmm. just going to be really comfortable. And mm -hmm. if you're not careful, this is why I say I also work with the person who has the anger issue, but then there's also right. the person and the other person in that relationship right. where right. you need to hold them accountable because if you let that slide, then all of a sudden you've set a precedent that mm -hmm. this is how we're going to do it. And then next time yes. you get a little closer to trying to hold them accountable, they're going to be like, oh no, mm -hmm. oh no, don't do mm -hmm. that. That was so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. so embarrassing. You're going to bring that up, but nobody yeah. takes more energy. Seek pleasure, avoid pain, That's use the right. least amount of oh, use the least amount of energy. And so it takes yeah. more energy to find the words to put a, to identify those feelings and then express that. That's hard. It's just easier to yell. Yeah. We nobody we've all seen been out shopping at Costco mm -hmm. or something like that, and we've all seen the little toddler have a meltdown and throw you know, mm -hmm. throw a tantrum, hit their parent, all that other kind of thing. We don't need practice at how to do that. That, we don't. that behavior came that just happens installed. Innately. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. What we need practice at, at least in that kid's defense, mm -hmm. they don't have the words, they don't have the vocabulary right. to express right. themselves. But right. you do. What's your excuse? <laughs> yeah. And so. That's um, good. That's good. Yeah, and, and, and I, I love that because you're right, we are having these adult temper tantrums and it, because it spills out on everything else, you're right. Uh, we now are embarrassed about that uh, um, and, and then we don't know how to recover from it by saying, you know what, I'm sorry. Because a lot of it, you're right, we're deflecting something else, uh, uh, some other things that we unresolved and, and one of my boys, uh, Danny Ross, talks about the messages we carry. We're carrying too many negative messages and dumping yes. them all at the wrong person instead of dealing with them in their individual silos so yeah. that I'm not taking out my frustration on Dr. Chris when you're just trying to get me physically back functioning well and, and you, you, you're massaging that pain, that, that 
you know, that tender area, and I'm right. just now going off on you. Mother, don't you know? Right. You're like, wait, wait I'm, tr I'm just trying to help you out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't even take it personally because it's like, I, you know, at first you're like, did I do good. something wrong? And then you go through it a bunch of times. You're like, this ain't about me. This is, this it's is not. you. Ooh. Energy is created nor destroyed. It's just transferred from one, Ooh. you know, to another. And so those unresolved feelings in that well, they carry energy. And if you're not doing something to appropriately channel it, it's going to cut. It's going to come out. You can't. You can't. Yes. You can't over. You can't avoid the physics of things. Uh, Doctor Chris, you're think, killing me today because you're dropping some <laughs> nuggets on us. You're dropping. But but you're absolutely right when you're talking about if negative energy enters the body. Talk to us from a, f a physiological aspect of that. How does it affect us? Um, our, our, our body, our, our physical health, negative energy, all those negative emotions. What do you see in your practice, how it has affected us physically? What I see is, you know, it's this negative energy, especially if it's mm -hmm. energy, if we perceive it as negative. And then, so then yes. we're going to respond to it that way. You know, your right. heart rate's going to go up. It's going to impact yes. your breathing. It's going to impact your yes. stress you know yeah. which can impact your cortisol levels and if you're in this yes. constant state of kind of fight or flight that's not yes. fight or flight was designed to help keep us alive of, in case of a saber-toothed tiger you know jumps out uh right but now if you're not dealing with it you're always kind of on this constant alert and yes. that's not good like it's it's once again i'm a big proponent of balance like you need the mm -hmm. sympathetic but then you also need the parasympathetic you need to rest yes. and repair and digest yes. and you never get an opportunity to do that and so a lot of chronic ailments can stem from that and it's really totally. because you're not addressing some of these negative energy and sometimes it's sometimes it's not even it's a it's a miss interpretation of something and when you go and talk about it with that how many times you're like oh i thought you said this I'm like no nah, man i said that and then you were so mad yes. about it and then once you realize it wasn't the way you thought it was it didn't match up with the story that you kept telling yourself and once you realize yep. it then it's like all of that pain goes away instantly but yes. you have to have freedom lies on the other side of that difficult conversation. You have to have that conversation first. And if you never do it, then you're going to be walking around carrying this grudge about something when it was really a misunderstanding and it could be, it could have been easily resolved in a lot of times. So yeah, that negative I hear energy is too often. Yeah. That negative energy is killing us. And then when we, when, when we're listening to respond, as opposed to listening for complete understanding, uh, if, if I'm listening for understanding, they're going to say, Dr. Chris, so what, what I heard you say was X, Y, and Z. Am I right? You have an opportunity to say, no, that ain't not, exactly. That's not at all what Absolutely. I said. You're like, oh, my bad. Okay, what, what did you say? Let me, let me listen right. again because I totally missed it. Uh, right. and, and, and that can resolve, I would even be, veer to say, over 50% of our challenges as we're dealing with anger. Let me just get an understanding of exactly what you're saying first and foremost. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Dr. Chris, oh my God, we, we are we, we are almost at time here. Listen, you gotta are come we? back. <laughs> you, you gotta come back, man, because I love this 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 um integration of physical health, mental health, and, and how those two work so in tandem with each other. And and if yes. we're talking about our mental wellness, we all we cannot exclude our physiological health wellness as well, and and all that comes about as as a result of that. So let me ask you a couple quick questions before we leave today. What okay. is your go to for your own personal self care? Ooh, my go to. So <laughs> uh, I am music. Music's my ah, go-to. Like I, in okay. addition to being a physical therapist and a functional movement coach, and a, uh -huh. you know, uh, coaching people on how to manage their their emotions, I love music. Uh, and so I DJ on the side. It, okay. it was something that started out as a hobby, 
and uh -huh. um and i'd always wanted to do it so uh my right. my name is dj cold sweat uh and ah, so uh, i love it i love it i I love just putting on some tunes and just vibing out or really trying to put a mix together. That's a go-to. Um, breathing, running. Mm. I love going on a run, walk kind of thing. Um, yeah. Getting a haircut, cutting your hair, you know, doing okay. something for you. A lot of times I'm like, yes. I'm feeling off. And then I go and check and I'm like, when's the last time you made a mix? When's the last time you went running? Mm. When's the last time you, you, you cut your hair? When's the last time your you did checklist. these things? And then yeah. it's like, oh, it's been a while. Then I'm like, well, shoot, no wonder why you're feeling all crazy. Like, uh, go right, on, right, 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 right. And usually, yeah. it, it, a lot of more times than not, you do. It. And sometimes life, the challenges, life is life, and you know, you mm -hmm. can schedule stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DJ Cold Sweat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Break you so, out of cold sweat. That'll be good to chill you yeah. off from the anger. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Man, so, yes. Uh, How do we go follow you, Dr. How do we follow you? So, you you, you got, brought us such a great wealth of knowledge. I am on Instagram. It's Dr. So it's Dr. Period. Chris. Period. I period am Dr. Chris. I am kind of like how Will I am does his uh, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. separates his name. OK. With the, with OK. Periods. Uh, Yes. So okay. Follow Dr. me on Chris Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, there I have my personal uh, Facebook page that's public as Chris Williams, um, and then there's okay. uh, Progressive Transformations uh, has a page you can uh, on Facebook as well, so you can follow us there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, those are those are pretty much where where I'm hanging out currently. Love that. Love that. Well, man, listen, Dr. Chris, I can't thank you enough for coming on this show tonight. I'm honored that you would come on and be with us, but definitely I'm here to tell you this ain't going to be the last time. And when I'm in the North Kakalaki area, I'm going to definitely call, give you a call, man. Uh, love North Carolina. Uh, last time I was in Charlotte uh, about two years ago. Got to come back out there and hang out in Charlotte. Love that area. Um, yeah. Haven't been in Greensboro for a minute, but yes. Yeah. We'll get some barbecue and some bojangles. Um, oh, hey, listen. And then we'll go. Then I'll we got to go for you. a run or something like that. Oh, <laughs> like, oh okay. I, I, I got to get in shape for that. Uh, I'll be like, I just, I, I, I left my running shoes. So sorry. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm a PT and me? a functional movement coach. Like, I got you, man. Uh, like, no worries. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Listen, y'all, we want to give a shout out to Dr. Chris. Thank you so much for coming on here tonight. Listen, Dr. Chris dropped some amazing knowledge on us tonight. He says there's freedom on the other side of a difficult conversation. I'm here to tell you there's definitely freedom in that and that we need to free ourselves from a lot of this anger, this uh, uh, isolation, this feeling that we are alone. We are here to tell you, and Dr. Chris told you, you are not alone and we need to create these safe spaces. So how do we do that? I'm so glad that you asked these questions. We never want, never want to leave you without some resources that you can go to to support you along this mental health journey. Here's some mental health resources that we suggest that we want to give. If you are experiencing any type of crisis, you can type, type crisis to 7417 for one. There they have some trained mental health um, professionals there to help you through your crisis and get you to what you needed help that you need at that time. Please check out uh, Psychology Today, where you can find therapists that look like you and that can help you out. Therapyforblackmen.com Com, amazing resource um, that I'm on so many others. And therapyforblackmen.com is also offering scholarships to those black men who cannot and may be struggling with paying for some of your therapy sessions. Goodtherapy.com, another wonderful resource that you can look at and look at therapists that look for therapists that look and resemble like you. And you can look at their pictures and see their profile. And of course, marcelconsulting.com here in Southern California. California. So please, we don't want you to not have those necessary resources so that you will have be able to get the necessary help that you need. But also check out our website, our website at Mental Health 
MentalHealthMarty.com. MentalHealthMarty.com. There you will find some amazing items in there to support you along your mental health journey so that you know that you are doing all right. We have this wonderful journal, Stop the Stinking Thinking. That is a writing journal. And the book for that is anticipated to come out on Father's Day of this year. And so excited that my children's book, if we're looking at releasing that on Easter of this year. So please stay tuned because it's dealing with children who are secretly suffering in silence. We have the Black Mental Health Matters t-shirt that comes in amazing t-shirt what does it also say black men matter and we also have the hoodie for those of you who are are still experiencing some cold weather that will keep you warm on these cold days again as i always say each week we don't want you to continue to secretly suffer in silence in the shadow of shame but we want you to speak up speak out and live but more importantly don't be angry but learn how to enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Take care and God bless.